Welcome back. This is Talk, the home of Common Sense. 8.21 on Sunday, July the 14th. The shooter has now been named by the FBI as Thomas Matthew Crooks. He uh, was a 20-year-old man. He was from Bethel Park in Pennsylvania, from Butler, the site, uh, 43 miles from Butler, the site of the attempted assassination. Uh, the gunman was shot dead by Secret Service agents. The FBI did not name him until they got the results of his DNA back. Now, the latest lines coming out out of the United States say they don't currently believe there are any additional existing threats but this is still an active investigation it's too early to conclusively say it was a lone wolf attack uh, CNN a news organization in the United States are reporting that the shooter was a registered Republican who made a 15 pound donation to a Democratic aligned group now President Biden has said uh, he condemns equivocally the shooting at the Trump rally in Pennsylvania citing there is no place for this kind of violence going on to say it is sick it's sick he's also been quoted as saying he is grateful that Donald Trump is safe and doing well following the campaign rally shooting Keir Starmer the Prime Minister has said I'm appalled by the shocking scenes at President Trump's rally and we send him and his family our best wishes. Political violence in any form has no place in our societies and my thoughts are with all the victims of this attack. Two big voices in the United States have also spoken now. Bill Clinton says violence has no place in America, especially in our political process. Hillary and I are thankful that President Trump is safe and heartbroken for all those affected by the attack at today's rally rally in Pennsylvania and grateful for the swift action of the US Secret Service. Barack Obama has said there is absolutely no place for political violence in our democracy. Although we don't yet know exactly what has happened, we should all be relieved that former President Trump wasn't seriously hurt and use this moment to recommit ourselves to civility and respect in our politics. Michelle and I are wishing him a quick recovery. Joining us now is Roger Gawalb, who is a geopolitical expert. Good morning, Roger. Good morning, David. Really, I mean, however you look at this, and um, whatever your political affiliations are, these are really shocking scenes coming out of the United States. Another attempted assassination of uh, someone running for office in the United States. Uh, lots of questions being asked about security there. Why was this gunman allowed to get so close, in such close proximity, onto a rooftop near Trump during a rally, a rally with families and children there? But also the broader question about gun control in the United States, the mental state of a 20-year-old uh, uh, assassin who uh, tried to kill President Trump. Lots of questions to be asked, but also at the same time, Trump very much using this with that defiant punch gesture into the air to say he remains alive and well. He is continuing to run for office. We've heard statements about the convention which is taking place in the next few days as well. And tensions running very high indeed in the United States. Yes, and I'm afraid that we've just, for example, been given a rather distorted picture by your last guest, Mr. Walker. It amazes me how some British journalists can actually spend time in the States and understand so little about America, Americans, and American politics. I mean, he failed to mention all to He said that it was Trump's words that caused January 6th, as if there's no doubt about that. Um, and he told us that this was a crackpot and not a conspiracy. I don't know how he thinks he knows that, but it was so opinionated, it rather put me off. And of course, he forgot to mention completely uh, the interview that Gary O'Donoghue, the BBC's own Washington correspondent, had with the young man who said, I gestured, I told the police, I told the Secret Service this man was climbing and they ignored me. Now, how a journalist can leave a fact like that out of a report is, is exactly what's wrong with so much. Well, 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 also, to be fair to him, Roger, we're having a lot of reports of various people saying that they saw someone on a roof that they informed the security services at the time. That they, Those are unsubstantiated reports. Those are from those people themselves. I, but, I, I, all, all he had to say was that Gary Donahue of the BBC saw that and witnessed it and said it on his programme. I think it's a very important fact, David. So, so what are you saying here, Roger? Because What, what I'm saying is that... The, Trump has been saying, and Trump's people have been saying for a long time, and the fair, balanced view would be that 
uh, Biden has weaponized the Department of Justice, which includes the FBI and the CIA and other institutions. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm saying I don't think it be, should be brushed aside in this man called a crackpot. I mean, Lee Harvey Oswald uh, turns out pretty much not to be a crackpot. So we don't know what's going on. But, you know, I don't know how somebody sitting over here can take that firm opinion. Well, well let's, stick, let's, let's stick to the facts, though. What we do know, he was 20 years old, Thomas Matthew Crooks. He was from Bethel Park in Pennsylvania. He was shot dead by the Secret Service. Now, my real worry here is we're already seeing conspiracy theories abound on social media saying that this was the work of the authorities, the Secret Service were involved, they were trying to take Trump out, they don't like tr what Trump stands for in terms of the upcoming presidential election. Now, those are all rumours. There are all conspiracies and they need to be put to bed don't they um they don't need to be put to bed they need to be considered as part of the argument because this is not a conspiracy theory out of the blue this is what donald trump has been saying for years this is what he wants to save america from this is the swamp that he wants drained um look how the supreme court has grown tired of these feeble attempts to prosecute him based on ridiculous things like traffic court judges uh, trying him over questionable uh, trials without evidence, as he's claimed. Uh, this is nothing new. So I think we must be open mind to the fact that the uh, elected American government today uh, may not be completely honest. And as uh, Mr. Walker said, American politics is very, very rough and tumble. It makes us look like a tea party here. So I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But I certainly don't dismiss these out of hand as nonsense. I mean, they're pretty wild allegations if you're saying that actually it was Biden's team somehow is involved in this. Joe Biden, he also, Mr. Walker failed to mention, said only days ago, let's put Donald Trump in the bullseye. Now, even if all that did was inspire some nutter 40 miles away who thought he heard his spiritual leader uh, call him to arms, even that, you know, was a terrible, terrible thing to say. You can't blame Biden for, uh, you know, Trump's injury and the assassination attempt. But there's too much here to ignore. Well, well, I think also there are a lot of things to consider here. We, Amy and I were talking earlier about the mental health of this young man. We don't know anything about that. For example, we don't know motivations behind all of this. What it does say, though, Roger, is you mentioned the rough and tumble of politics. We've talked about it in this country. The fact is it is becoming nastier, far nastier sure, on, on the sure. doorstep, which is, I, in my view, totally unacceptable. But the United States is on a different scale entirely. Totally. And, and that country has never been so divided between those people on the right and those people on the left. Yeah, and you're taking, if I may say, a very British view of this. I mean, this is America, where, you know, uh, things are very, very rough and tumble, to use that phrase again. And uh, this is nothing extraordinary. This is what happens sometimes. It's happened before. Uh, and it's very possible that Trump is right, that these agencies have been taken control of. And I don't mean that the head of the FBI is sitting there plotting to kill Donald Trump, but various people in these agencies could have agendas of their own. The fact that the that so many people have said that the warnings that there was a man on a roof, I mean, Gary Donahue's interviewee said there were men on other roofs. Why wasn't there someone on this roof? You, you can't just dismiss it, especially in a country like America, where the attitude and the uh, actions are quite different than they are in well-behaved... But, but equally, Roger, we can't jump to conclusions and there needs to be a full inquiry as to what happened. I think those are very valid questions. Why on earth were those buildings not searched? Why weren't there armed officers on right. a flat roof overlooking where, where Trump would have been? Now, those are all very valid questions which need to be looked at in the fullness of time. What does this say, though, as we approach the convention and Trump has just messaged through Truth Social, but also the Republicans themselves, 
themselves have also messaged about their upcoming convention, saying we look forward to joining you in Milwaukee as we proceed with our convention to nominate Trump as our 47th president of the United States. He will continue to share his vision to make America great again. This is, this is language which will appeal to those grassroots supporters of the Republicans saying, yes, Donald Trump is back. He's going to make America great again. This is all ratcheting up yet another notch, isn't it? Well, yes, except that, again, Mr. Walker doesn't understand. This is Let, Let's elite. leave Mr. Walker alone. Let's just, let's okay. just concentrate on the evidence. It, this, is not, this, is not, this is not appealing to uh, crazed Trump supporters. The actions of Donald Trump yesterday, David, are, are appealing to all Americans. I mean, I heard a report of somebody who was um, at a dinner with a bunch of people who wouldn't vote for Trump in a million years, and they said how their respect for him went up. The way he behaved, that defiant gesture that, you know, you're not going to stop me, um, I, I am going to save America, is going to garner respect in every quarter. Uh, people are tweeting this morning that that's it, Trump has won the election, because compared to somebody whose uh, uh, mental state is being questioned more and more, uh, somebody who can behave like this after having just been shot and almost killed is the kind of hero that all 330 Americans want. They're not all going to vote for him necessarily, but I'm just saying I think it's a very positive thing. And I don't think, I absolutely don't think, oh, this is something he's going to make political hay out of. He's going to make capital out of this. Uh, he didn't shoot himself. He'd, I'm sure there'll be somebody somewhere who claims sure. he set this all up to look good. There'll be and they already are, Roger. They already are. Thank you very much for your time, Roger Gawalb, the geopolitical expert.